Hey there, Breach fans. Brian to Cook, and today we're playing my personal favorite modern deck, Lotus Breach. I've uploaded a few videos over the last few weeks. The first one was a double Lotus with both Lotus Bloom and Lotus Field. That was an idea from a supporter of this channel where we were trying Lotus Bloom over Consider because in my previous video, the one that looked a little bit more like this, I expressed that I was a little disinterested in Consider. I feel like it's by far the weakest slot in the deck. And while with Streets of New Capenia or Capanna, however you'd like to say it, I don't know words, uh, but with Streets, we get a new powerful spell, and that's the card we're playing today, an offer you can't refuse, The Godfather, some Italian movie from the 70s, whatever. Well, we have a really powerful new counter spell. So counter target non-creature spell, its controller creates two treasure tokens. Well, this is pretty interesting because it doesn't say opponent spells, which means that you can counter your own spells, which works pretty well with zero mana spells in our deck. So we have Profane Tutor, which would have to come off suspend for it to work, but in theory, you could counter your own profane tutor and then you so you spend one mana you counter a spell you didn't spend any mana on and then you're plus one mana the same thing applies to mishra's bobble you can counter spell your own bobble to generate a mana or your own pact of negation which is pretty interesting you might be thinking brian when would this ever come up the real answer some of the time uh, i wouldn't expect it to be like every single game you're countering your own spells but this is a deck that uses Underworld Breach, and we often need cards in the graveyard to generate Breach fodder, but also mana. So I think that it's something that will happen, and that's why I'm interested in it in Lotus Breach. So an offer you can't refuse seems like a possible upgrade over Consider, because when we started playing Otherworldly Gaze, Consider's value just went straight down. Uh, if I'm being honest, because Otherworldly Gaze does everything we ever want to consider to. So today we're trying an offer you can't refuse. It's also really good post ad nauseum because it takes a little bit of stress off of all of your twiddles. So I think that's really nice as well. Hopefully it's the upgrade we've been looking for. Stick around and find out today. And if you've never watched this deck before, let's say this is your first time ever viewing Lotus Breach. The idea of this deck, we want to get Lotus Field into play. It's a hexproof land that tests for three mana. From there, we have effects like Twiddle and Dream Script to untap it. That's how we make mana in this deck. There's no true ritual effects other than Dream Script and Twiddle. You know, I always say that Twiddle's the alpha blue dark ritual. I mean, and now it's true uh, with Lotus Field, right? I've totally never said that before, but hey, thanks for watching this anyway. Uh, but yeah, so we untap the Lotus Field with the Twiddle to make mana, and then we play Underworld Breach. So then we can rebuy our Twiddles over and over, generating a, a ton of blue mana. From there, we use Tome Scour to mill ourselves to create Escape Fuel for Underworld Breach. This allows us to mill our deck a whole bunch. So for every two times that you cast Twiddle followed by a Tome Scour, you, you're adding three Storm and you're adding 10 cards to your graveyard and escaping nine. So you're always plus one card on Escape. Eventually, after you've escaped enough cards generating enough Storm, you cast a Lethal Grape Shot at your opponent. So that's why this deck is called Lotus Breach and then you use Twiddle, Tome Scour, and Grape Shot. Alternatively, if, you're if your opponent has Graveyard Hate, we have Ad Nauseum to work in conjunction with Lotus Field and these Twiddles. You might be thinking, well, why would I play a deck that's based around a single card? How am I going to find it all the time? We have effects like Profane Tutor that search your library for a any card coming off Suspend, and then we have Wishclaw Talisman. And then, you know, we have some other stuff in this deck like Pact of Negation, Inquisition, and Offer You Can't Refuse to Protect Our Combo. But that's the game plan here. In the sideboard, we're still playing Leyline of Sanctity over an effect like Veil of Summer. People keep on asking me, like, are you sure you don't want to switch back to Veil of Summer? Stop asking. The answer is no. I actually covered this in my previous uh, video where Leyline of Sanctity is so good because you don't need to be on the play, which is something you do need with Veil of Summer. Because if you're ever on the draw, discard decks are just going to shred you apart. So Leyline gets around that. Um, and you don't have to hold open mana, so you're allowed to advance your own game plan. So in my opinion, Leyline is the perfect card if you're looking to beat those black decks. I understand it does come with the downside of being not great with ad nauseum. You'll notice in my previous video, I actually faced that mono black control herb work cabal coffers deck twice. And I had a game where I boarded in two ley lines and then open handed one with my ad nauseum and everything went perfectly. 
that's not the norm. So I was thinking about it, instead of running double Ave, today we're going to run a Peer into the Abyss. This allows you to board in Leyline of Sanctities while keeping a non-graveyard combo engine that generates a ton of cards to your hand. So you just swap Peer with Ad Nauseum, and then you can board in Ave and Ley Lines. So I think Peer makes a lot of sense. It just requires a little bit more mana up front. And then something that people have been clamoring about in the comments section recently is, hey, Bryant, we'd like you to try Pithing Needle. It makes a lot of sense against effects like Relic or Nile Spellbomb. You can also use it to name Besaju. I hear you. I'm going to try it today. I hope it's good, truly. Because, uh, I, I mean, in, in theory, it makes sense, right? Like, it does everything we want the, it to do. So we're trying it over the second copy of Echoing Truth, and I don't remember the other card. Oh, uh, Engineered Explosives. So we're trying Needle there. So instead of allowing them to remove our graveyard, we're trying to stop them from ever removing our graveyard with the Needles. Uh, and then, obviously, we have Fatal Push for the aggro decks like uh, Hammer Time, whatever. Bounce Spells are for Blood Moons. But I'm hoping today that an offer you can't refuse counters a lot of A, Teferis. I guess you can't see that hand. A, Teferis. B, Chalice. And now I'm saying B, even counting with, you know, my digits. It doesn't matter. And then Blood Moons. So I'm sorry. This uh, this intro has been a little bit rambly and nonsensical. But I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, at least. Uh, but that's what I've got. Hopefully you enjoyed this weird deck tech. And I will see you in the first match. I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for some Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out theepicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for 7 tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us, just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to match number 1, we're playing Lotus Breach. I've opened up a really strong hand, we're definitely going to keep this. We're on the draw, I have no clue what our opponent's playing. Spire Bluff Canal, into Dragon's Rage Channeler. The menace of the format, blue red Merc Tide, or is it tempo, whatever you would like to call it. Mishra's Bobble. Our hand's actually pretty good for this matchup, but we do need a twiddle effect. Alright, they'll draw off their bobble. And we hit Profane Tutor. Play the bobble. Pass that turn. They play another island. Now they're getting in, we'll follow the 19. And they're just passing. Okay, so we'll target ourselves. Inquisition. And I don't think I actually need Inquisition here. We have Pact already. So I'm just going to go get Watery Grave. We need Twiddle. That's honestly what we need here. We have a bunch of Twiddles in our deck. Let's just draw one. Offer is not bad. Lotus Field is bad, though. We don't want that. All right, suspend this Profane. Pass. Turn three for the opponent. 
Another island. So they're on a triple island list. Is that normal? A dash dragavan. I uh the first list on goldfish does have three in it. I I don't know if I've ever noticed them having three. And they hit my twiddle, how dare they? And the next list has three as well. Okay, so it's just something I didn't realize before. Ruffian Tutor loses a counter. Draw. Inquisition. Um they have five. Let's target them. Double counter spell. Guess we'll take a counter here. Play the Lotus Field. Sacrifice these and pass that turn. Casting the Consider, trying to level up their channeler here. A Mill Expressive Iteration. Looks like they're about to dash Ragavan again. Now we'll take five down to ten. Like, ooh. Oh no, they just cast it the normal way. Okay. So we'll take three down to twelve. A little bit different. Now Tudor's coming off suspend. Let's cast this. Uh, I'm going to counter their counter. All right, so now we get the tutor. I can go grab Twiddle. Uh, so that'll be seven cards in Graveyard once that's done resolving. So I can Twiddle into Breach. I guess I get a draw step. Let's see what that, what that shows us. Inquisition. Not I would have loved to land there. Um, so I can go up to f five mana down to three with Breach. Double twiddle. I think this should work. All right, let's twiddle. Yes. Add triple red. Twiddle. Yes. Twiddle again. Remove the tutor. We'll leave packed for now. Can't hurt. Yes. Tap for black mana. Um, cancel. Do I want an Inquisition? The question is like, does that get me any closer to another? Um... Okay, so I could Inquisition then offer it. Yeah, I think I like that. Because this gives me one more, um, what is it called? One more escape. Now I can twiddle again. Or maybe I should play the, the Wish Claw first. So I think here I have enough mana to go uh, activate Wish Claw, go get Grape Shot, Grape Shot, Grape Shot. And then I don't even need to do the whole combo. Target you. Look at that. It was an offer I could refuse. Mwahahaha. I could play my Lotus Field here and sacrifice both my lands as well. I don't know why. Like, actually, I know why you would, but not in this certain situation. I guess it'd be kind of cool to end the game with just a, a, a breach and play on its own. The breach stands alone. We'll escape away these uh, Lotus Fields, so that way. Here we go. Look at that. Underworld Breach is just so busted. It's the only permanent on the battlefield, at least on our side. Love it. All right, game number one over is it Tempo. It was cute. We got to use the uh, the offer in that capacity. So now we have to be a little bit worried about Blood Moon effects. We're going to board in two more bounce spells. And then we probably want the packs. So 64 cards. What to board out? I think, and, I, and this could be a little bit crazy. I don't hate boarding out Inquisitions here. We now have extra protection spells with offers. And this way, if our opponent hits us with Ragavan, they can't 
take our discard spells and hit us with them. I know it's a little bit wild, but I don't hate the idea. I might try that out here. Having the luxury of boarding out Inquisition against uh, Blood Moon decks seems really nice. This does not seem really nice. We're going to mulligan this. Okay. Um, we just really need a second land here. Okay. Bobble. Parting themselves. Scalding Tarn. Steam Vents and... Old Rags, sure. And another Bobble. Targeting me this time, so they'll draw two cards in our upkeep. I'm going to auto-yield to these so I don't have to deal with those anymore. Graw. Not the land we needed, pass. There's no point in me fetching, by the way, because we know the Grape Shot is the bottom card of our deck. And we also know that uh, I don't want to thin my deck of any lands because I'm trying to draw into lands. You go to 18, they had a bobble. How dare they get card advantage from me? Okay. Land two. They're passing. Draw. Another wish claw. We have to pass the turn. Not looking good for the home team at the moment. They cast a consider. And another consider. Channeler. Ouch, we'll go to 16. They hit a breach. We don't need that, so not the worst, but we would like to hit a second land here. They can play the Underworld Breach and then rebuy Bobbles. <laughs> they can now combo off. They have double channeler. Ah, uh, the missed opportunity by the opponent here. With uh, double channeler in play in the Bobbles, they could have uh, drawn a lot of cards here. A lot of cards. They have eight damage coming in next turn. So my time is running out very quickly. I'm on the draw land plan. And they hit relic. I think we're probably just dead here. Yeah, let's just pack it up and go to the next one. So I did see relic. I could board in needle. I don't know if that's something I'm actually interested in or not. Um, I think the real plan is just like win through it. Although I could board out the Ad Nauseam and keep and board in the Ave, because that would give me protection against Ragavan and Graveyard Hate. Um, let's try that. Did I say protection against Ad Nauseam? Protection from Graveyard Hate, but also like protection against Ragavan. I think that's what I meant to say if I misspoke, because now we have two win conditions. It's interesting because Offer now uh, can provide green mana for the Ave as well, which is kind of funny. Let's try this. Game three on the play versus Blue Red Merc Tide. This hand's really solid. Keep. The card we're missing is Lotus Field, but we can get that with our Wishclaw Talisman. Opponent takes a Mulligan. We'll just play the Grave Tapped and pass the turn. Fire Buff Canal, Bobble. Bobbles themselves. And they're just passing. So now they draw. We're going to just play the Claw here. Grape Shot, not exactly ideal. Um, I guess they'll get the Steam Vents, because if they play like a Ragavan or something, I can uh, kill it with the grape shot. Okay, I like Wish Claw resolving. That's good. So if we were to draw a Twiddle effect, we could go for it on our turn. But right now, I need both Lotus Field or Twiddle. So if I draw either of those for my main phase, or my draw step, I mean, we could theoretically try to win. But as of right now, my current hand, I cannot untap and win. 
All right, they have channeler, and they're just passing. Draw. That does not do it. Um, so we can play the grave here. I could just like try to kill the the dragon's rage. I'm going to, but there's a downside with this play, and that's if they just like play relic, uh, they could hit the grape shot. And they left in lightning bolt. Okay, so we go to 14. And now we pass. I believe we could try to win next turn now. Ooh, they're passing. So they have four cards in hand. If they have double counter, they could stop us. Draw. Oh, maybe we just play this Wish Claw if that's going to be the case. And I guess we'll scour ourselves here because this actually helps uh, with mana a little bit. And I know that it might not seem obvious, but the way that it works is if you need to escape a um, a dream script before you were to tome scour, it actually does benefit you this way. the The downside is if they happen to have like a surgical effect, um, then it could bite you. Expressive iteration. And they revealed another expressive iteration. Okay, so they have five cards. I think we're gonna go for it here. Go get the Lotus Field. Blue. We'll sacrifice these Watery Graves. Attempt to untap the Lotus Field. If they have Fluster Storm, I cannot beat Fluster. Well, at least I couldn't on that specific dream script. Uh, I could actually beat Fluster now, I believe. Pitches counter spell. Okay, I'm gonna pact it. If they counter the pact or counter breach again, I can wish claw for another. And that resolved. Okay. Let's untap the Lotus Field. And they appear to be F6. Untap. Is that the correct choice? I think so. Okay, now we can scour ourselves. Remove the pact. It's from seven. It's from eight. From nine. We had a few more packs, so that worked out. Twiddle. It's from ten. Scour. Remove some of these twiddle effects, I suppose. From 11. We're just going to do this the hard way. I don't want to have to double grape shot, which might seem a little bit silly, but the idea behind not doing double grape shot is that it allows me to not lose to something silly because I'll be able to pact multiple times. Now we can twiddle. From 14. Scour. Uh, maybe I'll leave the Ave. It can't hurt. From 15. All right, and our opponent has conceded the game. They've seen the writing on the wall. We are 1-0 over the most popular deck in all of Modern with Lotus Breach. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Round two, and we're on the play. Five lands, huh? I think we're going to ship this. Classic. 
Right? Oh, jeez. Get punished, Bryant. Like, I could have kept that seven-card hand. It just would have been terrible. Uh, oh, well. This is the best hand we've seen. So what to bottom? Definitely this Inquisition. Then I think you can probably get rid of one of the Twiddle effects. Blooded Strand past the turn. We're a control deck, right? That's what this means? I will control this game with Grape Shots. Bloodstained Mire. Overgrown Tomb. Thoughtseize. I guess I didn't need to give them the info of what I was fetching for first, but I wanted to be lazy. And had we kept our seven, uh, we'd be getting Thought Seized right now. We'd have five lands twiddle. So, I don't know. At least now we have a Lotus Field. Profane Tutor was a good rip. Grab that island. Suspend. Pass the turn. So, depending on what happens on the turn that our Profane Tutor comes off, the Profane Tutor could get Underworld Breach. We already have Lotus Field. And we have this Wishclaw in the graveyard, which could represent Tome Scour. So we might have the combo. Um, they are, in fact, Jun, but we could have guessed that based on the Overgrown Tomb. They're at 12 life already. We could also look at just getting Ad Nauseam and completely dodging the graveyard. Or other, um, like, disruption pieces. Ooh, that was a good one. So we can dodge the graveyard, but also like if they hold open Assassin's Trophy or something like that, Ad Nauseam would just play around that. Red? Nope. Oh, Inquisition. So they're getting a Twiddle effect either way. Now the Tarmogoyf is a 4-5. Another land. Oh, they had double thoughts or double discard. That's so brutal. Um, okay, they have two cards. This comes off suspend. What do we get? I think we probably just get breach. But the problem is we don't have enough cards to win with breach. All right. Draw. Suspend the profane. Pass. So now we take four down to ten life. Our opponent still has three cards in hand. Run in six. Okay. Now they're at nine, potentially even lower. Seven. The complete disregard to my clock. Ooh, another goif. That's scary. All right, Profane Tutor, draw. What does that mean? Um, so if I fetch here, I go to nine, which means that run plus these kills me. So I can go to nine cards in graveyard. If I go to nine cards in graveyard, I can... Twiddle twice into the Witch Claw, but that doesn't do it. So I think part of me wonders if I'm supposed to keep this flooded strand in hand for a possible Liliana of the Veil, but also I don't get I don't show them that I need that life point for the Renin Six. Yeah, I'm gonna pass here. Is that the right? <sighs> Sorry, I just want to think through this one more time. So. I go to nine cards in graveyard. I can only. So let's say I fetch the steam vents. I could cast breach with two floating, twiddle, untap. But I don't have enough to escape three times. I only have enough to escape twice. So I could play the claw, but then I fizzle. So I'm just going to pass the turn here. For a mulligan to five, we're doing okay. And our opponent saw the line of pinging us. Shuts off our fetch land. And now we have the profane coming off suspend. But I can't cheese them because if they didn't ping me, 
I could um, just get the scour here and win. That's no longer an option. So I think now I actually have to get a twiddle. And then draw. Another profane. A little bit annoyed by that. Uh, twiddle. Okay, red, red, red. Breach. Escape. They're at seven, so I don't actually have to get scour here. All right, let's twiddle again. I don't think I have to get scour. I think I can just do um, wish claw into grape shot. Okay, that's from six. Activate. And now we go get the best wing condition in all of modern grape shot. I'll let you. Hiya. Boom. Got game number one over Jund. All right. So we definitely want these ley lines. Get rid of this ad nauseum. Bring in the A, bring in Peer. I think you probably want the bounce spells and maybe the needles. Uh, take out all four copies of Inquisition. Get rid of the pact. Oh, get back in here. And then get rid of the offers. Where does that leave us? 61. Okay. Um, hmm. I wonder if you, like, take out another worldly gaze. I'm going to try this out. Very good hand. Wow. Keep, 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 keep. Play line. Bloodstain Mire. Blood Crypt. Okay. It allows me to play my Lotus Field without sacrificing anything. Uh, not as good as... And they named Lotus Bloom. They named Lotus Bloom, not Lotus Field. Lotus Bloom. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised it even lets you name non lands. Oh. Choose a non-basic land card name. I feel like you should only be able to name non-basics with that. Like, you shouldn't be able to name Black Lotus. Uh, poor opponent. Feel bad. Bobolos. We don't need that. We're just going to fetch. Okay. Draw off the bobble. Delta. There's a saga, sure thing. The nice thing about Leyline, by the way, is it also shuts off Nile Spellbomb. Hidden mode. Alright, let's suspend this profane tutor. Pass the turn. Saga moves up to two counters. And Overgrown Tomb. Ooh, so they have Besaju. Okay. So now they have um, a way to make us discard cards. We're going to get the Steam Vents here. We still have the Profane and Exile if need be. They're going to take the Breach here, I imagine. And they do. All right. Tutor. Draw. All right, I think I'm actually just gonna play the field. Or maybe I don't want to in case they have another Alpine Moon. You know, I'm just gonna play it. Pass. I'm gonna keeping the basic island just in case they have Blood Moon. I know it seems silly, but I'm not really going to need either of those non-basics. I guess you could argue that Steam Vents could theoretically cast the 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 gut shot or grape shot, but I don't know if that's really what I want to be doing. And they have spell bomb. So right now my game plan is to go get Ave uh anyway. So the spell bomb doesn't matter. Liliana, that's fine. 
I think we're going to discard the Delta. Okay. Profane Tutor. So this is Storm 1. And now we're going to go get Slime Time. Save Progenitor Ooze. Draw. That draw was perfect. All right. Uh, so let's tap this for red. Or actually, I can't do it that way. Hold up. All right. So I, I do have to do the first one for blue. Untap. Yes. Now you do it for green. Untap. Now we tap for red. And grape shot for four. Okay, and we'll do three at Lily, because then Lily can't make me sacrifice a creature. So she's just there to make her opponent discard a card, which is absolutely fine. And then Storm 5 is the Slime Time Live that's going to make 20 power worth of ooze. Huzzah! Nice Spell Bomb, Alpine Moon. And that's the game. All right, so now we're 2-0 over Jund. Got a little bit lucky here that our opponent named the wrong card. That doesn't escape me, I'm well aware. By the way, that's the breach pun. Uh, but, you know, I'll take it. We're 2-0, three rounds left to go. Stick around. Playing your favorite combo deck in paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot everyone's favorite storm wind condition, a galvanic relay exile indicator, four treasure tokens for strike it rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has slime time live, eighth progenitor ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice, we've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels versus Goblins, Chatterstorm versus Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel tokens and 20 Goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. Match three, we're on the play. Yeah, this hand uh, does the thing, keep. Okay. We're going to fire off a bobble here and another bobble. Target ourselves. Let's see what the top card is. We don't really want that. So we're just going to fetch, grab an island in case we draw otherworldly uh, gaze. Let's target the opponent as well. Forest. Okay. So we'll just go to their turn and in their upkeep, we'll draw two cards off these Mishra's bobbles. Lotus Field's a good one. Okay. So that means that this Profane Tutor can go and get the, um, what is it called? Tome Scour to win the game draw. We even have Pack Backup for an Endurance or Force of Vigor, whatever you'd like to call it. All right, suspend so the Profane Tutor past the turn. We're facing Amulet Titan that opened up without an Amulet. Okay, tutor happens. Next turn it will come off. Um, let's just play the turn, I guess. We don't need to play the Lotus Field right now. Three mana. Azusa lost but seeking. Okay. That's uh, land number one that's additional, and there's land two. Now our opponent's passing. We will go and search for the, uh, what is it called? Steam vents here. Grab that vents. Start with slow hand, as I mentioned. Now the profane tutor comes off suspend. All right, cast it. Go grab that scour. Draw. Beautiful. All right, play the Lotus Field. 
Sacrifice these two. Twiddle. Yes. Tap for red. Underworld Breach. Twiddle. Exile some lands. Why not? Twiddle again. All the mana. From five. Yes. Scour ourselves. Otherworldly Gaze. We'll just put all everything there. Scour ourselves again. Storms eight. We just have to find the group shot at this point. Like in theory, I probably could uh like rip uh like double twiddle, wish claw, and a group shot. Alright, well, let's untap. Storm ten. Untap again. Let's remove the bobbles. Why not? It's from 11. I'm going to pop my graveyard. I'm sick of it bouncing back and forth. It annoys me. Okay. So we should probably just start scouring again. Oh, and the opponent conceded. They saw the writing on the wall. All right. So we're going to game two against Amulet Titan. Um... I do like packs in this matchup because they stop both Endurance and Force of Vigor. I don't think Needle's that good. Uh, it could stop something like the Haste Land, but they're a deck that I can also just like tutor up Besaju on command. So maybe I want them for Besaju. Not sure. I do think Inquisition's sort of stinky in this matchup. It does hit Endurance, but that's pretty much it. Um, maybe Offer's not that good here, actually. So let's try bringing in the Needles. And I'll bring in the Echoing Truth, I suppose. Let's try this out. I mean, I don't have strong opinions on uh, what you should be doing in this matchup. This is the first time I've played the deck with Offer in it, so I don't have definitive game plans. But this hand's pretty solid. We'll keep this. And they've gone to six. So I do have some concern that Profane Tutor is too slow here, but I don't know. Like, you're not going to ship a hand that can go get uh, Lotus Field. And they opened up on the Besaju and they played it. All right, play the Bobble. Target ourselves. Underworld Breach. We don't want that, so we're going to fetch. Pass. And our opponent's upkeep. Let's cast this gaze before we draw because we can mill cards we don't want here. Okay, we can definitely mill the talisman. And I want the twiddle. The question is, do we keep the echoing truth? I think the answer is no because we plan on tapping out every turn. So we're gonna keep the twiddle on top. We'll draw twiddle. All right, now they get to pick up that Besaju. Draw. Once again, they have a little bit of a slow start here. I'm going to suspend the Profane Tutor. Because that Tutor can go get a Needle to stop the Besaju. And they replayed it. Okay. And there's the Dryad. Now they pick up Besaju again. No amulets for them. So this is going to get auto-yielded. Next turn it will unsuspend. Um, I think we just play the Strand. Push Claw and pass that turn. So, as of right now, unless they have two untapped lands, they can't play... Okay, that allows them to play Titan. And they have Titan. Um, so they still have one land drop, so they could get double Vesuva here. Or not double Vesuva, double Valakut. Bog Valica. Okay. We know that they have the uh, Besaju in hand. I think we can actually win now. Because they don't have mana to Besaju up. We'll go to 11. And I can even pack like an Endurance here. Honestly, if this was their play, it would have been better to just hold open mana. 
All right, so let's fetch. We go to 10. Might as well grab this watery grave. All right, so Profane Tutor will come off suspend right now. Cast it. Go grab Lotus Field. Take a draw step. Delightful, another land. Okay, so we can play Lotus Field. Sacrifice these two lands. Twiddle. Yes. Let's tap this for three red. We'll activate Wishclaw. Now we go get Tome Scour. Underworld Breach. And attempt to untap our Lotus Field. Does this resolve? It does! How lovely. Okay. Now we'll tap this for three blue, cast Tome Scour. Add Nauseums in there, but we don't really need the Nause at the moment. Uh, let's target ourselves again. Term six. Let's twiddle. I want to keep one blue open if possible. Term seven. Our opponent is not hitting F6, so they might have something. I'm just not sure what that something is. Scour ourselves. Oh, Wishclaw, IOK, Otherworldly Gaze. Storm 8. Target ourselves again. Storm 9. I'm just gonna... I don't think there's any point. I, I've milled another pack, too. So I do have double protection. Twiddle, untap the Lotus Field. This is Storm 11. And our opponent's conceded. Okay, we're now 3-0 over Amulet Titan. If you look at the first three decks we've placed, the best deck in the format, Blue Red Merc Titan, followed by Jund and Titan. Three pretty solid decks and we're 3-0. Let's see if we can just finish strong with two more match wins. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. We are on the play for what I believe is the fourth round in a row. Let's see if we can pick up another match win. This seems really good, but we have to find a second land to sacrifice to the Lotus Field. We have two free cantrips here. I think I'm going to take that risk. It's a calculated chance. We have three looks at uh, a land. I'm sorry, four looks at a land. Is that correct? Three. It's three. We have three looks at a land for turn two. Okay. Swamp. Bobble. Bobble. Okay, and we're going to pass, and then we'll bobble our opponent, see what they're up to. The reason we're doing it on the upkeep here is in case they're a discard deck, they can't discard anything that we would draw off these triggers. Target them. Okay, spicy. We'll let them take a draw step now. Verdant Catacombs. They're likely just like the five color. Um, can't think of what it's called. Like the creature that becomes a five five. Yeah. Okay. So they have Bloodbraid. All right. Deck. We are asking you for the second land here. Can I please have one? We'll auto yield. Oh, we hit it. Pretty good. Pretty good. So if I played the Wishclaw this turn. Can I add Nauseam next turn? I guess that's the million dollar question. So I would float two mana. Use the Swamp to activate. We twiddle off the Watery Grave. The only way I could add Nauseam next turn is if I drew a third twiddle. So I think instead I'm just going to suspend the Profane Tutor here and pass the turn. Verdant Catacombs. They get the Triome. Arid Mesa, okay. I don't know why I can't think of the uh, the multicolor creature that I'm trying to think of. 
it's like a five five and it comes into play you can like exile a card in graveyard or you like randomly draw and discard i think it does i don't know it's like a giant kavu all right we drew another gaze we're just gonna play wish claw here see if this resolves lotus field sacrifice these and pass the turn steam vents and no effect okay my play really depends on what our opponent tries to do here if they tap out for something i don't care about i could maybe just do the normal breach win but if they hold open mana i think i'm supposed to add nauseam to play around uh like an assassin's trophy style effect and they played the general okay so I believe we can just win the normal way here with Underworld Breach. Cast. Go grab Breach. Draw. And another Lotus Field. Perfect. All right. Untap. Tap for blue. Twiddle. Yes. Tap for red. Underworld Breach. Otherworldly Gaze, we will mill all of these. And now I can actually add Nauseam too. I think I can add Nauseam with protection here, actually. Let's twiddle the Lotus. Yes. Tap. Twiddle Lotus. Yes. Tap for black. Add Nauseam. Remove Dream Grip, Underworld Breach, Otherworldly Gaze, put Ad Nauseam on the stack, Storm 8. Hey, this is more fun. And this deck's highest converted mana cost is 2 outside of Ad Nauseam, so we can definitely draw a number of cards here. Okay. Feels good. Down to 8, 6. Well, I guess we'll stop at 4. We have 22 cards in hand. Beautiful. All right. I guess the downside of this line, even though I'm having more fun, is we did show our opponent a little bit more of our deck. We'll bounce your... Oh, protection from monocolored. My bad. That's why that didn't work. Uh, let's play Bobble. Bobble them. All right, so they're actually the... Uh, what is it called? The Cascade deck that uh, Celebrated Blast, Calibrated Blast, one of those two. Uh, it's a blast of some sorts. So that actually gave me a little bit of insight. So that bobble was great. Okay. So Storm's 14, Storm 15, Grip Shot all at you. Boom. Okay. So we've gotten game number one over the Calibrated Blast deck. Should I be boarding in Leyline against this deck? I should look up that card, because Leyline might be a good consideration here. And that's game one. And here's the card. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card. Put the reveal card on the bottom of your library in any order to any target. So it does target, which means that I can board in Leyline. I don't think Leyline's the worst here. Um, I don't know. Let's try it out. We'll bring in packs. I don't think you need bounce spells really. Like I'm gonna bring in the Void Snare, but or keep in the Void Snare, but I don't think you actually need Blast that much. So I really like Offer against them if they are the Calibrated Blast deck. Obviously, we brought out the Adnaz, but we're at 67 cards. We're going to board out the Inquisitions. That brings us to 63 cards. Maybe I just don't have Pact in the deck. Or I think I have to leap one Pact. 
Like, I don't think I'm allowed to board out all of them. That'd be a mistake. Um, maybe one other early gaze again? Or we're on the draw. I could board out one profane tutor. I think I like that. Let's do this. I'm up for trying things out. So we've opened up ley line. Uh, that said, the rest of her hand doesn't do a whole lot. Um, I think we're supposed to just take a mulligan here. Better. So we're going to keep this and then bottom the void snare. Keep. And the void snare. So now we start off the game, reveal this ley line. Wooded foothills. All right, they played a steam vents and passed. Bobble. Target them, why not? There it is, Territorial Kavu. That's the card I was talking about. It's whenever it attacks, not whenever it enters. Okay. And then Bobble. Target ourselves. Well, we definitely don't want to draw that, so we're going to fetch. Just grab an island in case we draw into other worldly gaze. Otherwise, I would grab a watery grave, but in case we hit our one mana spell, I want to be able to cast it. So we're going to draw two, another breach, and profane tutor. They're at 17. Damping sphere, huh? Wasn't expecting that. Grab the swamp, and we'll just suspend Profane Tutor here. We do have the Void Snare in the deck. But we're pretty far from being able to win. And there's the Kavu. Suspends, draw. Had a third breach, geez. Okay, pass the turn. Um, and now I'm wondering if Leyline isn't what we want, because if they are on the Kavu, maybe there's, I might have mis, um, understood what our opponent was doing, because I don't think they're actually the calibrated blast deck anymore. I think that was just an oversight. Yeah, they're not the calibrated blast deck. I'm going to change how I boarded for the next game. Although they did Lightning Helix themselves there, so I did save three whole damage. You can't deny that. It's just a hard fact. Okay. We will cast this. I guess we get Void Snare because it bounces the Sphere, but I'm still very far away from winning. Another Profane Tutor. Jeez. Suspend. I'm not even going to get to live long enough for that card to be useful. Okay. The problem was that I kept a hand with one breach, and then these three were our draws throughout the game. Blood Braid, yep. Okay, so I played this game wrong. I board I boarded wrong. Like the ley line was never actually relevant. So I'm going to change how I boarded for this. And uh not the end of the world. Okay, so we don't want offer. We do want the Inquisitions. Let's get rid of the Ley Lines. Uh, Ave might be okay, but I think Ad Nauseam is probably going to be better. Maybe not. They are an aggressive deck. Ave might actually be better here. Bring the Echoing Truth. That's 59. So I could do Second Pact, I could do Ad Nauseam, but I think I like the Ave. So I could do one Needle or one Push. Tough call. I think I'm going to do... I'm going to do a Push. I can kill the Kabu and slow them down. Alright deck, I need you to carry me in this game three. You get to see a whole lot of cards. I mean, the Grape Shot's essentially a mulligan here. So if you think about how this hand plays out, we have two random cards with the Bobbles, the Grape Shot's a mulligan, and each Otherworldly Gaze is also card disadvantage. 
So this is really like a five card hand. Um, I'm gonna mulligan. I think that's the correct decision here. Oh, come on. Killing me, Smalls. Opponents considering their hand. They've taken a mulligan. So we're going to go to five now. This is a really good five. Uh, so I think we're going to keep this. And then the question is, what do you bottom? I think you get rid of the fatal push and then you get rid of one of the twiddle effects. Because now with this hand, all you need is an underworld breach because you can use otherworldly gaze until you find uh, something else. I'm just going to play the turn and pass. Looks like our opponent also went to five. I, I missed that. I thought they just mulliganed to six. Couple of five card hands over here. Triome. Okay. So we'll fetch, and I'm going to cast this other worldly gaze. See what we find. Don't want any of that. Okay. Draw. That was a good one. Now we play the Wish Claw. Pass. So I think if we really wanted, we could try to breach when next. Oh no, they have the uh, the sphere. Uh, but I think we'd actually need another dream script for that. So we we didn't have it anyway. Upkeep. I think I'm gonna flash back the other really gay. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna play the Lotus Field into this. Let's just draw. Okay. Pass the turn, and then I'm gonna flash this back. So they just hard mulligan to damping sphere in this matchup. We did board in answers. Sure. Okay. Get the steam vents. And then flash back. Okay, put that on top. So we're about to draw an Underworld Breach. I can use Wishclaw for Void Snare, but then I'm a mana short. So I think I'm not supposed to do anything quite yet. Like, I'm going to draw the Breach and then just pass. Okay, so we're drawing Underworld Breach. And like I said, so if I wanted to get Void Snare, I would tap the island, tap the Watery Grave, bounce the Damping Seer, but then I only have one land. So that one land isn't going to do it. I'm just going to pass and then flash back Otherworldly Gaze. Okay, so they're going to attack for four. We're going to go to 12. They're going to discard a card and draw a card. They discard Charless Agent. And they hit land three. They grab a steam vents. It does seem weird for the Cascade deck to be playing Damping Sphere. Sure, I'm at nine. Flash back the other worldly gaze. There's Echoing Truth. Um... I put the truth on top. I need to think about what we can do here. So I can bounce the sphere, play Lotus, sack these two lands, Dream Script floating one. I'm sorry, floating two. Wishclaw for another twiddle and a breach. And then I think the end game would be the Ave. But if they have, like, a Assassin's Trophy or Abrupt Decay, I'm, I'm got. Um, but then again, if they have Burn Spells, which this Lightning Bolt would indicate, I'd be dead to um, the card from Invasion, the deal 5. Territorial Domain or something like that. Okay, let's bounce the Sphere. Tapping 2 mana. Okay. So they have nothing. And actually, they just help me by increasing my storm. Play Lotus Field. All right. So now we Dream Script. Now we tap for blue. We're going to search our deck for another Twiddle effect here. 
cast the twiddle. Yes. Now we tap for red. Underworld breach. We have 13 cards. So we will untap our lotus field. Yes. Tap. Lotus field. Bobble. Yes. So I'm just trying to think here. If I wanted to... Hmm. It's a lot of burn spells they have over there. If I bounce the claw... Ah, oh, jeez. All right, so if I echoing truth the claw, I'd remove land, land, grip. And that would leave me at the end with Ave, Grip, Echoing Truth, Twiddle. So that would leave me with four cards so I could escape one other card. So I'd bounce the Wish Claw. And then I could activate Wish Claw for the Tome Scour. And then I could Twiddle. That might win here, actually. Remove these three. The Lotus Field is Play and Activate Claw. I think this wins. I mean, I can play it safe and just Ave, but I'd feel really dumb if it didn't work. Like, what if they have Bolt in hand, and then they just go activate Double Bolt you, and I'm dead? Um, I think my line works. All right, Echoing Truth the Wish Claw. Land, land, grip. Now we untap the lotus field. Okay. Play and activate wish claw. Now we go get tome scour. Scour. Scour again. Dreams grip. Wish Claw, Delta, Strand. Okay, Storm's 13. Scour. Remove the Pact. Scour again. Dreams Grip, Untap, Lotus Field. From 16. Tome Scour. From 17, scour again. And now we twiddle. There's the grape shot. Untap the lotus field. And I mean, this is really what we wanted anyway, right? Like lethal storm 20 grape shot. Like that's the joke, right? Like storm 20 grape shot. And our opponent concedes. We got there on the mulligan to five versus damping sphere. We're 4 0. One match went away from glory. Stick around, see if we can do it. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below. And in there, you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. We're on the play, and I have a correction to make. I was going to be all excited about how we won five die rolls this league. We lost round number one. So my previous round, I lied. We didn't win four in a row. But hey, four die rolls, pretty good. We're on the play for match five, the fifth and final match. We're playing for a trophy, which is pretty sweet. And uh, this hand is great. All we need is a twiddle effect off the top rope. Okay. So we're going to lead off on Bobble here, target the opponent, get a little bit of info out of them, Temple Garden. Go get that watery grave and then cast the Inquisition, knowing that they have a Temple Garden on top of their library. Target them. And they're on the Wargate deck. Okay. The Shimi Bloom, I think it's called. And they have the Colossus. Um, the Fairy doesn't matter with our current hand. 
I mean, we just take the Tashimi, I believe. Wargate War gets them to Lotus. Because they just want to play Lotus Cultivator Colossus. Um, I don't know which one I'm actually supposed to discard here. Whenever one or more non-creature land permanents are returned to hand, draw a card. Trigger this ability once per turn. Return target land you control to its hand. Return target artifact or enchantment from your graveyard to the battlefield. So I think we're supposed to just hit the Wargate. I believe it is just hitting Wargate here. So I'm going to take the Wargate past the turn. Draw a card off Bobble. Ad nauseum. Okay. So we're still in the spot where we need to find Twiddles. That has not changed. Honestly, the Ad Nauseum is kind of a blank draw because it doesn't help me. Another uh, Inquisition. Do we take the, the Fairy here? Because there, like, there's no point to me playing the Wish Claw. Guess we take the Tef. Steam Vents pass. Windswept Heath. Getting in with the bird to send a message. I like it. Another Wish Claw. All right. Our draws have been a little bit clunky this game. They're fetching. There's the Tashimi and Temple Garden. Draw. So something I could do here is go get Lotus Field and bounce my Wish Claw. Maybe that, what, cancel. Yeah, I think that's actually the play here. Get Lotus Field. Bounce my own claw. Ah, oh, my bad. I didn't realize that they were going to draw a card off me doing that. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. I would have just, if I had realized that, I mean, I read Tashimi like three times this game, but had I realized that, I would have just uh, played the second claw. Now they have the war gate. So I guess I get to see uh, our opponent combo now. Damn. So this is my own fault. Yep. Shouldn't have bounced the, uh, the wish claw talisman. Oh, they, they drew double war gate off that? Wow. All right, nothing I did mattered. Okay. Now our opponent plays a bunch of stuff. They have the Lotus Bloom. I mean, I've never seen this deck go off before, so I'd like to see it. Like, you might be watching this going like, oh, Brian's a jerk, he's making the opponent play it out. I don't know what this deck does. Uh, because I've never seen it go off. I've technically played against it once before, but our point kind of just sat there and died. So I'd like to really see what it can do. So they have a Taff. Whole bunch of mana. Sure thing. Now they're going to play their Colossus all over again. You got it. Okay. Do you win with like an Oracle? Is that how this deck wins? I bet people watching this think I'm an idiot. Like, I just don't know what it does in order to win. Aldamari's Call. They get another Cultivator Colossus. Okay. And they're going to cast it again. Sure thing. All right, so they're about to cast another Colossus. Making a bunch of mana. I'll slide my sideboard down so that way the Teferi isn't hidden. Stoneforge Mystic, what? I don't understand. Lightning Greaves. Oh, so they make the Colossus into like a 2020 in attack. I see. Is that really better than just like playing an Oracle? I don't know. Like, it just seems like this deck could win with Thassa's Oracle. Like, why are you playing a Stormforge package? 
now they play the Greaves and attack. Okay, so I learned something here. Uh, so that's cool, I guess. The more you know. Cauldra? Sure. <laughs> All right, I'm fine with conceding here. I didn't know how this deck won, so I, I mean, that's good to know, I guess. Uh, that, and I don't have to feel bad about bouncing because they double working on top of their library, so they definitely ran a little bit hot there. All right, so we're going into game two. I think due to them having a bunch of Teferis in their deck, we should look to board out the Profane Tutors. And I think you want to keep, like, the one packed, even though they have the Teferi. Um, just, it's sort of free. I think we want the Needles for naming Tashimi, but also, like, we saw a Beseju and some other stuff there. Uh, that brings us up to 58, and then we can board in the two bounce spells. Let's try this out. It did not help that all four of our draws we had that game were just terrible. Like, our opening hand was fine, but we never drew anything that was useful to us. Game 2 versus a Tashimi combo, I think you call it? I don't know. But uh, this hand is terrific. Keep. This Wishclaw Talisman really is only there to represent Pact Negation. Okay, so we're just going to play the Scalding turn and pass the turn here. I guess the Wishclaw Talisman is also our Tome Scour, but I think we have the Otherworldly Gaze. They suspend the Lotus Bloom. Okay, we're just going to fetch Otherworldly Gaze. So if we mill the Grape Shot and they have like a Rest in Peace, uh, that would really hurt. I don't want to draw Grape Shot though. I'm going to keep the offer. Draw. All right, I'm going to pass and hold open the offer you can't refuse. And then next turn, we can try to do something meaningful. I could also flashback the other worldly gaze this way. They just play a land. What's going on here? Lightning Greaves, sure. Let's flashback this gaze. Okay. Our turn. Draw. Beautiful. Lotus Field. Untap the Lotus Field. Tap for blue. Whittle. All right. And now we tap for red. Underworld Breach. And that resolves. Okay. Things are looking good. Twiddle. We already have the grape shot. Yes. Wishclaw Talisman. Activate the Wishclaw. I'm going to use the red. Go get Scour. Target ourselves. Whittle. I'm going to try to hold open the blue here for the uh, offer. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but uh, I'm going to. And our opponent concedes, so we are now a game away from a trophy. Come on, Doc. I don't think I'm going to change anything. I also didn't learn anything about our opponent's deck in the second game. All I saw was the Lightning Greaves. Game three on the draw against the Wargate combo deck. This hand is an Underworld Breach away. Do we keep it? Our opponent has kept seven. It's literally only Underworld Breach away from this being a turn three. Um, I'm going to keep it and then regret not drawing it. Misty Rainforest, pass, draw. Void Snare, I guess that does something, maybe? I don't know. They pick up a Ketria Triome. Fetch, just thin our deck a little bit here. 
slightly increase those odds, draw. An Echoing Truth, okay. So we have the bounce spells. What are you doing? Call, okay. Lavinia, well, I do have double bounce spell here. I don't have enough to win yet, but I have the answer to the Lavinia. Sure. Okay. Draw. Um, this doesn't win right now. Hmm. When it's four cards. So I could play like Wish Claw in the field and then next turn Void Snare and go off. But then I don't have Echoing Truth up. But I don't think they can kill me from here, but I could be wrong. Like if they just go Wargate into Tashimi, then they have one land that could be Cultivator or Colossus. But I have this Echoing Truth. Um, I don't know what to do. I could also just like play Steam Vents tapped. Pass the turn on their end step, Echoing Truth the Lavinia. And then on my turn, I untap with three lands, play the Lotus Field, twiddle it, but that's not enough to win. Four cards. All right, I'm going to just play the Wish Claw. And hope that Dream's Grip is enough interaction if I need it to be. Oh, I forgot about the Lotus Bloom, too. So they're pretty close to being able to hard cast uh, Colossus. Four mana. Oh, that's really obnoxious. Um, actually, is it? I don't know if that matters, because next turn I'll have two lands, and I can win with two lands on the table. Goblin Engineer. So this goes and gets Lotus Bloom. I think I can win here. Like, I don't think that Lavinia matters. There's the Bloom. All right. Yeah, I think I can just win through the Lavinia. Draw. Okay. Play the Lotus Field. Untap. So we have to tap this for red. And now we go get Underworld Breach. Cast the Breach. Okay, float blue. Dream's Grip, untap the Lotus Field. And now we have the Scour already. So at this point, you should just be going through the motions until we hit the uh, Grape Shot. We could also bounce Greaves and then bounce the Lavinia if we needed to. Scour, Twiddle, untap the Lotus Field. Um, I could Inquisition them. Feels like that's a waste of resources, actually. Let's just Dream Script. I like Dream Script because you can't misclick on the. Uh, would you like to untap? It's just it it untaps automatically. All right, let's pop that graveyard back out so I don't mess this up. Storm is six. Scour. Gaze, gaze. Twiddle. Storm seven. Storm eight. And there's our dream script. Untap. Storm nine. Scour again, remove the bobble. The bobble would be countered if we played it due to the Lavinia, but there's no reason to ever play the bobble in this uh, situation. Okay, so Storm 10, we're a little over halfway there. Still have to find the group shot. Scour targeting us. Untap. We can't even cast the Pact. Remove the Breach, Void Snare, and Twiddle. Scour again. Storm 14, and we've hit the Grape Shot. Untap. 
Okay. Um, skip 10 cards. Let's scour down to one card and deck. Needle, twiddle, offer. Dream script to untap. We can remove the scour, land, breach. Let's inquisition them. They had Wargate Colossus last turn. And now we finish our event with a grape shot. That's the trophy through Lavinia. Pretty happy about that. <laughs> uh geez. This was a good league, uh, certainly. All right, so yeah, I mean, it's hard to be upset with the trophy league, right? Um, let's close out of this. Beautiful. We used to offer a few times. He didn't really draw it as much as I'd like to, but the deck ran super well without consider. I never really noticed that it was gone, so that was nice. Uh, we never needed peer, but the ley line Ave peer interaction did come up. We just never needed the peer. Ave got the job done. But I like having access to the peer in the board. Uh, credit to CEDH for showing me uh, or giving me the idea. Because, well, in CEDH, you play both peer and Ave, or both peer and ad nauseum, I mean. Um, and then the needles were fine. Uh, I'm probably going to continue to play them, test those out. But let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching, especially if you made it this far. Cheers and have a terrific day. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.